Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tech.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which as usual has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day. We have quite a bit of stuff to get through in today's video. The good news is, though, we are starting out with AMD and Zen 3, as we finally have an epic processor in the wild, which is a Zen 3 engineering sample. Um, credit to Executable Fix for this discovery, who uh, posted it on Twitter. I'll, of course, link it in the video description. Now, unfortunately, this specific set of patch notes and information does not provide us insight into the core configuration of this particular sample. We'll get into that in just a moment. But what we can ascertain is that it has a 1500 MHz base frequency and a boost frequency of 2.2 GHz. Now that is certainly way slower than what you can have with the current second generation EPIC processors, which are around 1 GHz faster, but it is worth noting that the Zen 2 EPIC uh, CPUs, when they had early engineering samples, were roughly operating at similar clock frequencies anyway. My guess is that this is still a rather early sample for Zen 3, and it is going to be interesting because Kamachi on Twitter also uh, was listing this as Genesis Peak. Genesis Peak is actually the next generation Threadripper parts, which of course do sport many similarities with Epic for obvious reasons. So it is not surprising, I suppose, that the two have gotten mixed up. Either way, it is going to be fascinating to see exactly what Zen 3 brings to the table. You may recall that uh, I have put out a couple of leaks for Zen 3, and according to all of the information that I'm hearing, Zen 3 in terms of IPC is actually a pretty big leap from Zen 2, and Zen 2 itself was no slouch. One of the reasons that Zen 2 just had so much performance was because some of the features that were originally intended to be included with Zen 1, so the original debut architecture of Zen, actually got pushed back and found their way into this into Zen 2. And of course, Zen Plus was mm, a very slight tweak to the original Zen architecture. So just for this video, I'm going to say that Zen Plus didn't exist and just talk about Zen and Zen 2. Zen 3, though, according to uh, AMD themselves, is going to bring a similar leap forward to what we would expect with a new architecture. And indeed, I'm hearing that it could be around 15 to 17% IPC gain on average. Of course, that word is very important, average, because different workloads will push the CPU differently depending on what they're asking, uh, what instructions they're asking it to process. If I had to take a guess, and it is only a guess, I suspect that games actually may benefit more than other workloads simply because of what we've seen with the leaked roadmap and uh, architecture information. With the now unified CCX, I suspect that um, it will definitely improve gaming performance quite considerably. And if we couple that with a modest clock speed bump, yes, I imagine that Zen 3 is going to be very, very competitive. I am hearing, though, that clock speeds are probably not going to be drastically higher. After all, the process itself is uh, an enhanced version of 7nm. But even so, a couple of hundred megahertz are, well, not exactly out of the question. In terms of core configuration, SMT, it remains consistent from the previous generation. So with Epic, that will be topping out at 64 cores, 128 threads. And I'm hearing Ryzen is going to be the same as well with the, I assume it will be called 4950X, uh, sporting 16 cores, 32 threads. It won't be until Zen 4, at least according to my knowledge, that AMD do perhaps choose to redefine this uh, constraint. And some of it is also because of memory bandwidth, but also competitiveness from Intel. At the end of the day, if Intel were really pushing AMD, then perhaps we would see something different. But for now, I think honestly 16 cores for the mainstream is more than adequate. It will be fascinating, though, because Rocket Lake, I think, may still retain the gaming crown simply because of what we're hearing in terms of the architecture. It's not exactly a straight backport from Willow Cove, but it 
from what I'm hearing anyway, retains many of the features of uh, some of Intel's more advanced architectures and definitely will sport a pretty big uplift in IPC compared to what we have with the current uh, Skylake architecture. And furthermore, I suspect uh, Intel will be able to crank the clock frequencies up to 4.7, 4.8 gigahertz, possibly higher, but we'll have to wait and see on that depending on power consumption and heat output, of course. There are also quite a few concerns I've seen online because AMD are being a lot less boisterous with Zen 3 promotion compared to what they were with Zen 2. And I think there are a couple of reasons behind that. One of them being that the features themselves are a lot less, I want to say, amazing. You don't have the jump from uh, PCIe 3 to PCIe 4, for example, that we saw previously. And honestly, the biggest leap here will be power efficiency, performance, and a small smidgen of a clock speed bump, which I guess you could also say under performance. But there's no real differences, and remember, it is socket compatible as well. If I had to take a guess, AMD just don't want to scupper the sales of their Zen 2 products. After all, the Matisse Refresh, the uh, XT products, have not even launched yet. So if I were AMD, I wouldn't want to promote a product which is ultimately going to supersede the one that they've already got. It's kind of like NVIDIA. They're not going to be like, hey, look at this RTX 30 card. Look at everything it's capable of. Instead, they want to keep things on the down low and still sell you RTX 2080s or whatever in the short term. Welp, it's finally happening. Microsoft have announced the date of the Xbox Games Showcase, which is going to be the 23rd of July at 9am PT, or if you are in the UK, that's going to be 5pm BST. And, by the way, apologies for no longer being on camera for this segment of the video. Uh, honestly, I had already recorded all of this, but it was a rumour that had started from Calibral. We'll get, actually get into that in just a second, as he was teasing an RPG that's going to be apparently uh, shown off at the event. But then all of this got officially announced, so I'm re-recording it last minute. Um, so yeah, it's a thing. Anyway, this event is going to be massive. Um, Microsoft are apparently going to be bringing out the big, gu uh, big guns and will be showing most of their first party lineup. And the obvious title that will be shown off is Halo Infinite. It is naturally the latest game in the Halo franchise, but allegedly has a number of major improvements to the gameplay. It's going to be a lot bigger in scope, at least that's what the rumours are, compared to what we saw with, let's say, Halo 4 or Halo 5. And I'm actually really excited for it. We've seen a few teasers here or there, but it was very early in terms of implementation, and not all of the graphical effects were in, and so it's very difficult to ascertain what will change for this gameplay debut. I'm very excited. Furthermore, Titles such as Perfect Dark are allegedly also going to be present. Honestly, I feel that this is a very likely event. I think Perfect Dark is extremely likely to be shown off at uh, their event. And I also believe that there's a very good chance that we will see Fable. I mean, Fable pretty much got confirmed through the grapevine. And honestly, I think having a um, RPG and some balance in terms of what games they show makes logical sense. And I also suspect that we'll see Forza as well, as obviously it's one of the more established uh, uh, franchises from Microsoft. But getting on to a couple of the rumours, allegedly, according to Clobril, who typically has pretty decent sources for Microsoft in particular, claims that we will be seeing a couple of new games from uh, both Rare as well as Obsidian. From um, Rare, we will see Everwild. And there will also be a new RPG from Obsidian. However, the title from Obsidian is not confirmed. And um, I am really interested to see what actually happens from the Microsoft event, because I truly believe that uh, this is going to be probably the event that carries the forward in terms of momentum going into the eventual uh, release of the next-gen consoles. Obviously, there will still be events going forward. I don't expect Microsoft to show everything that they've been working on, but I truly believe that this is probably going to be 
a big event. I actually am pretty um, hopeful for this event. I think it's going to be way better than what we saw with the previous Inside Xbox teaser, which honestly, in my opinion anyway, was pretty disastrous. I think the problem with that event was that Microsoft set wrong expectations, and they really were pushing the whole gameplay narrative, and honestly, it just didn't work, and I think it was compounded further because the big event was the Assassin's Creed trailer, and I'm not saying the game looks terrible, but um, I truly don't believe that uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is that graphically impressive yet. Yes, the game hasn't been released, but uh, judging from a leaked 30-minute trailer that's popped up, oh, 30-minute gameplay, and I'm definitely not including that because Ubisoft is smacking it down with copyright claims, it still doesn't look what you could consider to be breathtaking. But it's not really a surprise, um, to be honest with you, given the constraints, apparently, of the Assassin's Creed engine. And so I think that uh, Microsoft had actually more impressive games at the event, but the big the big thing holding them back, at least in my opinion, was the fact that they had promised so much gameplay, and honestly, some of the trailers, at best, at best, you could say, were, well, teasers. And I I'd certainly would say that uh, gameplay was, um, you know, a couple of steps forward at most with a lot of the games. You know, it, you really couldn't get a sense of what was happening with the titles. And I think that Sony, with the Road to PS5 event, really hit the nail on the head. They also were holding back a lot of titles, obviously, like Microsoft have been doing. So I think it's going to be really fascinating to see what happens. Um, and I also wonder if this is the event that Microsoft are going to reveal Lockhart at, or whether it's going to be a bit later. I mean, at this point, Lockhart is kind of running out of time to be announced. Let's say the consoles launch in November, and that's not a leak, by the way. This is just me speculating based on past history. Let's say they let's say they release mid-November. Well, I mean, looking at the calendar here, it's going to be like the 23rd of July. So they don't, like, how much longer can they wait? Is it, will it be August, perhaps? Or maybe September they reveal Lockhart? Um, I... I will be very curious to see what the mic what the strategy is for the uh, Lockhart console in terms of pricing. I covered just yesterday actually why I think Lockhart is going to be so important for Microsoft's strategy going forward. And I do wonder if a Lockhart will launch after the Xbox Series X. Um perhaps for a supply constraint or maybe just so that the messaging isn't muddled or maybe just as a way to get the uh, Xbox One as kind of like end of line and sell it at as cheap as possible and then replace it with the Xbox Series S aka Lockhart. Once again this is all idle speculation from me but I'm super interested to see whether we do see uh, both systems launch simultaneously which honestly I think is the route that Microsoft will go uh, I still believe that Microsoft will try to undercut Sony for the pricing, but yeah, I think we're going to be in for a real treat this generation, um, especially for me who's primarily a PC gamer. I'm very, very hyped uh, for the next couple of years, and um, I'm going to let you all go. I think that just about covers it for this video. I'll also spend a moment to plug another video I did today, which is... Uh, whether we will see a last-minute spec bump for either the Xbox Series X or Sony's PlayStation 5, and I'll link it in the video description. With all of that said, though, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.